Hi friends, welcome back. This week we are going to be looking at how I have created Regency era undergarments on a budget. And of course, with the success of the movie Emma and the television series Bridgerton, Regency is having its moment in the sun. And while I have created um, a few Regency dresses prior to this, I wanted to actually try to create an entire wardrobe that is fairly close to historically accurate. And the best way to do that to ensure that you get the correct fit of Regency garments is to begin with your undergarments. And so I will move my poor old girl uh, a little bit closer. So I started with the linen chemise and I actually used the American Duchess Simplicity pattern and I made the sleeves on the chemise a little shorter. Um, this is a little bit earlier era, but it is what I had on hand and the shape does, um, it is somewhat similar to the chemises that were worn in the Regency era. And so the only other thing that I did um, for the chemise is I actually had to make a drawstring closure for the neckline. I have very, very narrow shoulders and the Regency fashions definitely set very wide upon the shoulders. So you do want a chemise um, that is basically almost falling off of you. But um, I think the original pattern design was for a possibly a broad shouldered person um, because it was just way too big. Um, and since it was a chemise, I hadn't made a mock-up. Um, I had just kind of used the measurements um, that were given on the package. So that was just uh, fairly simple um, to create the channel and run the cotton drawstring. And if for any reason I do have a garment that is that I need a really widely spaced um, neckline on my chemise, then I can just loosen it. But yeah, I like how it's adjustable and um, gussets, aren't they fun? Um, I actually uh, had a fairly successful gusset. I used the Burnley and Trowbridge so along and I will link to their tutorial down below. It helped me immensely in understanding how underarm gussets are put together. They're a little bit tricky um, and uh, otherwise this pattern I would recommend even for a beginner. And in terms of the linen, I got really lucky. So as many of you know, I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and we have the Dallas Fabric District and you can find some of the most wonderful things in their clearance bin. And I was lucky enough to get this beautiful weight linen um, for $5 um, for the piece that they had. And it was actually 60 inches wide and it was only a two yard piece. So I had to get creative with my pattern placement, but um, I was able to get the entire chemise cut out of that. Now, um, I am opting for the shorter uh, corset. You can do a long line Regency corset or the shorter corset. This is the 
red threaded PDF pattern. I personally um, did not make this. Uh, my friend Michelle and I, we trade. She likes to create corsets and undergarments and I like to do other things. So um, we have a great history of swapping. And so I recommend, you know, if you can get with a community and there are online communities and then of course in-person groups that if you can meet someone that you're trading off with your skills this is a fabulous way to um, be able to get what you need to create the silhouette so um, I actually again found the cotille in um, the the Dallas Fabric District in one of the clearance bins. Um, I think it was $5 for the Cotille, which is a start the car moment, uh, a great, great deal. And the cotton twill tape that I used for the drawstring as well as to tie the shoulder straps, that comes from Burnley and Trowbridge and the binding is um, white cotton binding. And so with, you know, Michelle happily sewing this for me, um, it was very, very minimal cost to create the undergarment. And she, um, she believes that with a little bit of assistance, this can definitely be accomplished by an intermediate seamstress. Um, it is the front gussets that are the most difficult. The rest of the pattern pieces a beginner could sew. So it might be a good group project for a beginning seamstress to pair with someone who is a little bit more experienced. Now we opted to um, use metal eyelets um, instead of hand-sewn eyelets. Uh, while hand-sewn eyelets are more historically accurate, this is the first and only time you are going to be seeing this underwear. And it certainly won't be on me. It'll always be hidden. So in the essence of time, I'm okay with uh, using metal grommets. Um, Again, it's just personal choice. Uh, whatever you like to do, uh, there's room for everyone in the costuming community. So with my chemise and my Regency corset uh, completed, the next undergarment um, that I wanted to make was the bodiced petticoat from La Mode Bagatelle. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I apologize if that is incorrect. And I had read some nice reviews that the bodiced petticoat provided a lot of nice um, support. And so to make my muslin, whoops, I just dropped it. I used a vintage bed sheet that I had found at an estate sale. And you know, I love using vintage bed sheets because the cotton is such a beautiful, soft, firm weave. And I, again, I think for this um, full size bed sheet, I believe I paid a dollar and you know a nice soaking in OxyClean and it it was crisp white again so I had taken my measurements and tried the La Mode Bagatelle um, bodiced petticoat and you know when I am creating my mock-ups I do everything as if it was going to be the real deal. And so, you know, in this bodice petticoat, there is a channel which you are supposed to put boning. 
and I do use zip ties um, because again, for those who are on a budget, this is a good alternative. And But what I discovered, because you can kind of see, well, that's only the top. So even though this was cut to my size, it was again for a very broad-shouldered person. And in order for it to fit my frame, it was going to be a lot of adjustments. And that is where you personally have to decide how much labor you want to put into your undergarments. Um, for me, I would have had to really um, cut down the center section as well as the outer pieces and I was envisioning probably at least three different mock-ups until I came upon the pattern that would have fit my torso and for an undergarment that nobody uh, was ever going to see that was more of a time investment that I was willing to make so I decided to scrap the Lamode Bagatelle bodiced petticoat. But since I had plans to make a dress out of the Laughing Moon, what is this one, 138 pattern, I needed to make a mock-up to see which bodice fit me. While you can always go by the measurements here, I still really believe in a mock-up. And for me personally, um, I have a condition called pectus excavatum, which that translates into layman's term as caved in chest. So that's why my shoulders are somewhat rounded. I also have a little bit of scoliosis. So my upper torso can be kind of tricky. And with the Regency silhouette, you really want a fitted bodice and a fitted waistband. Those two elements will keep you from looking like you're wearing a maternity dress. If those two elements fit well, then the dress is going to look beautiful, whether um, you know you are a small person or a very curvy person. The Regency silhouette looks beautiful on everyone if the fit is correct. And so I really wanted to use this pattern for my dress. So I had originally cut um, a size 12 and that that was based on the measurements on the package it was still really big and then I went to the next size down which was a size 10 and that fit pretty good um, I still on my dress will probably go down a size smaller but again for an undergarment that no one is is going to see I was okay the in order to make it fit well I just put the back uh, button closures the buttons are over quite a bit you know if it was a correct fit it would be cl a bit closer to the edge because by this time uh, you know in making the Lamode Bagatelle this was my, in essence, third mock-up, but it, the, it fit great. And so while the petticoat skirt is La Mode Bagatelle, and it was uh, very long on me, so I just did some pin tucks to um, shorten the skirt, and pin tucks offer a nice support um, to help keep the Regency silhouette and 
The only other alteration that I did on the Limode Bagatelle is while they have you make a slit and then bind it, I have never had good luck with that style of entry. It normally ends up ripping or I can't get the binding to lie smooth. So I opted for a center seam and then I created a placket. And to me, it just lays much nicer. Um, so, so far I have created a chemise, a bodice petticoat, and the corset. And by careful shopping, as well as some bartering, you know, I'm kind of around the $20 fabric range. Now, of course, the patterns are a bit pricey and, <clears throat> you know, the pattern makers um, deserve to uh, definitely be paid for their work. Um, in this instance, uh, my friend bought La Mode Bagatelle. I bought this one and um, she graciously allowed me to create my mock-up from her pattern. Um, and, you know, again, uh, it's, it's important that the pattern makers do, do get um, their patterns correctly purchased. Um, but if, if you are working closely with a friend, um, patterns that cost a bit more if if somebody is tired of their their pattern and you know on Facebook there are are groups um, where people sell the patterns that they no longer want so that's a definite avenue that you can buy the pattern secondhand um, but uh, you know it's it's a definite cost saving device and so the only other um, undergarment although you do see it is of course uh, the shimmy set and I actually had enough linen left over from my chemise because a shimmy set does not take a lot of fabric. And so this was really made from scraps and it was from the La Mode Bagatelle pattern. Uh, definitely a big beginning seamstress could use it. So after you have put on your chemise and your corset, um, then bodiced petticoat or shoulder strap petticoat, you would then put on your shimmy set if you wanted to fill in the neckline of your garment. And I'm sure a few of you eagle-eyed uh, seamstresses were noticing that on my chemise and on my corset, those were made on the sewing machine. And, uh, you know, I can hand so beautifully. Uh, case in point, let me move this a little bit closer to the camera and you can see that this is the rolled edge hem of my shimmy set and I have a pin tucked sewn edge. So those are definite areas that are going to be seen to the public. And when I am creating a garment from the Regency era, anything that is visible, I absolutely do by hand because that would have been correct to the Regency era. But if it's not seen like interior skirt seams and what have you, I'm doing it on the machine. <laughs> I, I really just don't have the patience. Um, I do um, have ADD, and so to keep me focused on my project, uh, I have found that for me personally, it's better to use the machine. And um, 
again, in costuming, it should be fun. It should be an enjoyable process. So I encourage you that if you love hand sewing, by all means, I am so in awe of all of you that are just making your garments um, all hand sewn. I tip my bonnet to you. Um, but I'm going to be using this, the sewing machine where you can't see it. So now that I have my undergarments made, I get to move on to the dress. And I think I'm going to opt for this one. And it's Bridgerton inspired. And of course, the Featherington family. I love the use of color. And I had this obnoxiously loud silk in my stash for quite a while. And again, I had gotten it in the Dallas Fabric District. And it's it's a beautiful shot silk. It's it's a pink and gold warp and weft. And it's it's just beautiful. But oh boy, it, it, you will see me coming from a mile away. And I, it is 58 inches wide. Um, I have only four yards of it. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it's going to be enough. And I had watched Angela Clayton's uh, Bridgerton dress a few weeks ago and I'll link I'll link to that video um, and I just loved all of the beading and whatnot and my friend Michelle um, she makes uh, dance costumes and she had this beautiful lace in her stash that she's had in her stash for several years so I'm going to be hand sewing um, this beautiful lace applique along at least the neckline. I'm not sure um, about the hem, but I, I am going to be embellishing the neckline as a nod to Bridgerton and their excess. So that's the next thing that I'm going to be creating. And I hope you'll come back um, to see how that dress construction process goes for me. And that will be in a future video. As always, I uh, appreciate a nice thumbs up. And if you'd like to be notified of when my videos are uploaded, you can just hit the subscribe button. And if you do leave a comment, I, I do my very best to respond to each and every one. And I will link down below in the description box to previous Regency projects that I have done, one of which was this um, blue cotton velvet spencer. And I love to wear it uh, just as an everyday jacket. As you can see, um, it's a lot of fun and it feels great. You know, I just want to hug myself. So thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.